Hello everyone. Welcome to Sharad Chandra IS Academy. Welcome to the session on important topics with respect to current affairs. Today's topic under discussion is your sedition topic. Okay. Sedition basically is a topic related to your GS2 polity. So whenever there is a topic that is related to polity, you have to discuss about uh, is there any provision in constitution or is there any law which is related to it. We'll be talking about why was it in news, obviously, and we'll also be talking about any scholars' views, suggestions, way forward and all. So these are all the topics that we're going to discuss today. News, court, uh, things with respect to sedition, arguments which are for and against sedition, and the Supreme Court judgments, and some views by scholars, suggestions, and way forward. Okay, this is what is the whole lecture all about. Now, coming to the term sedition, so basically sedition is nothing but, you know, uh, it is it is something which is related to the offenses against the state. Okay, if somebody is doing, uh, if somebody is creating an incitement to violence and all, you will be charged under a law called sedition. This was actually started in a colonial era. Okay, and under this sedition law, uh, you know, great people like Gandhi and Tilak were also arrested under sedition because they are going against the government and that's what is the reason for you know imposing this particular uh, sedition on them now the reason behind this particular sedition is a news because supreme court recently suspended the operation of sedition okay the operation of section 124 of 124a of ipc so section 124a of ipc talks about the sedition law okay and in the past also, you know, uh, in the past also, there were, you know, unprecedented critis judicial criticism, okay, by Supreme Court itself. It said that why a colonial law that were used against Gandhi and Tilak continued to survive in the law books even after 75 years. That's what is the criticism by Supreme Court. Court also, you know, felt that, you know, sedition law is like a, you know, uh, giving a saw to the carpenter to cut a wood, but this carpenter uses it to cut an entire forest. That means the power of sedition was given to just to corrupt the anti-national activities. But for every constructive criticism, if you are, you know, charging that people again uh, under sedition, it was actually, you know, against democracy, isn't it? So that's what is the thing that you will be observing here and that's what is you know some scholars views okay so it means basically the supreme court here actually is expressing it's you know it's concern about the possibility of misusing the sedition law that is the reason supreme court actually criticized why a colonial law should prevail even now okay i hope you understood what does this sedition mean so section 124A of IPC talks about sedition, okay. So under that in chapter 6, there was a chapter called offenses against state, which talks about the offenses against state. Under that, <clears throat> there is a definition of sedition. But the problem here is they have not described or they have not given a clear description of sedition. What constitutes sedition? What constitutes incitement to violence? when and how they should be charged under sedition these are the things were not actually properly defined in your ipc section and the other important thing is the sedition is a cognizable non-bailable and a non-compoundable offense okay sedition is a cognizable it means no warrant for arrest and it's a non-bailable and bail cannot be issued and it's a non-compoundable non-compoundable means the punishment okay may or may not involve the fine or and the punishment will involve imprisonment okay that's what is the section 124a of ipc now there are few views which are for sedition there are some arguments for sedition there are some arguments against sedition now coming to the arguments for sedition so some scholars feel that there should be a law like sedition in order to corrupt the anti-national activities. Example, left wing, ex left wing extremism. Okay. So to corrupt anti-national activities, there should be a stringent law like sedition. And to also prevent disturbance to law and order, 
there should be a law like sedition are you getting it so this is what is actually i i you know arguments for sedition in order to have a you know a society with no anti national activities it's good to have a sedition kind of law okay there are many arguments against sedition okay one is that sedition kind of law basically will create a chilling effect on free speech what is this chilling effect on free speech chilling effect on free speech means it will create self censorship okay chilling effect i hope you could not observe it so there is a chilling effect on free speech it means it will lead to self censorship what does it mean people do not have that liberty to speak something against the government the psychologically there will be an impact of law that will be running if you speak something against the government you will be charged under sedition so that's what is an argument against another argument is the vague definition of sedition see i told you right in the ipc section also they vaguely described what does sedition mean they specifically did not mention what constitutes an offense an incitement to violence okay another thing with respect to so these are all arguments against only okay these are all arguments against itself so many scholars believe that many liberal democracy have repealed the you know uh, sedition law okay now why a country like india should use it another issue is that there were many instances there are few instances of misuse of this particular sedition law as well okay so that's what is an another important you know aspect that is sitting in the minds of the people okay so there were you know instances of misuse there were instances of uh, you know a vague definition which is you know which is impacting and there are also few issues with respect to the definition of sedition there is a chilling effect on free speech these are all the things that were actually arguments these are all the arguments which are against sedition now coming to another important argument against is authorities are not following the kedarnath principle what is the kedarnath principle there was a supreme court case with respect to this particular sedition okay the case is called as kedarnath versus state of bihar case in that kedarnath versus state of bihar supreme court said that sedition charges should be you know imposed only if the speech is an incitement to violence only if the speech appears as it is you know incitement to violence then itself you should consider it as sedition okay so many authorities are not following the sedition law are you getting it okay now that the sedition law is repealed even most of the people are unaware that sedition law is repealed and still there will be instances of you know sedition charges against the people are you getting it so that's what is another problem and then most of the scholars as i have told you believe that this represents the colonial legacy a law which actually you know used against tilak and gandhi is still being continued in india okay and another important against you know argument is that there is low conviction rate to sedition cases okay there are many arguments which are against sedition so this is what you need to understand now coming to the supreme court judgment as we have already discussed that in kedarnath versus state of bihar case supreme court said that sedition charges can be applied only if there is an incitement to violence if your speech is an incitement to violence or if it is interrupting the public order then itself sedition charges should be imposed and coming to the scholar view i told you in a sedition in, in a book called sedition in liberal democracy scholar anushka singh feels that most of the liberal, liberal democracies repealed the law okay in the news part itself you know uh, i didn't mention there just to mention it now british you know britain country okay it also repealed the sedition law okay this is that's not a news topic but i just mentioned there okay so it means most of the liberal democracies you know repealed this law and replaced with with anti terrorist law so instead of you know using the sedition law 
you will have an anti terrorist law which is very much stringent okay that's what is the scholar view there are other views of uh, important scholars like for example abhinav chandra chud and he and uh, there were also some views with respect to uh, sedition by law commission as well so law commission basically suggests that this particular sedition should be reconsidered reconsidered and it should make changes according to the need because all of a sudden if you are removing the law just because of the reason that it is misused that was not a right thing isn't it so they feel like reconsidering this section 124 of a of ipc instead of repealing it and now coming to another scholar who is abhinav chandra chud okay in his book republic of rhetoric he actually says that sedition should be made as a bailable offense and there should be a strict following of kedarnath principle okay so these two views can be used as suggestions okay as i told you under this topic we will be learning about many things and under that suggestions is also an important task okay apart from the suggestions there were also challenges for example law commission said that there should be a reconsideration of this particular sedition law section 124a of ipc but reconsidering it law will entail to this legislative process it requires a proper legislative process in order to reconsider the law again yes so that's what is an important challenge with respect to reconsideration of law so now if you take the global scenario there also there are many liberal democracies which repealed this law now what should be the way forward the way forward is nothing but the suggestion given by your abhinav chandra chud can be taken okay so this can be considered as suggestions or way forward wherein he says that there should be a strict following of kedarnath principle or another way forward is that because you have many arguments against right in that one particular thing is vague definition of sedition if you could able to define sedition in a proper manner then that can be a that can be a helpful task that can be a helpful aspect in order to you know uh, uh, consider what constitutes sedition and all or if it is an you know difficult thing it is it is better to follow kedarnath principle wherein it says only if the speech is an incitement to violence then it will be considered as sedition isn't it the conviction rate should be you know it should merely it, it should properly be implemented and it should not you know create a chilling effect on free speech these are all the suggestions that you can give and coming to the way forward you can write that sedition can be made as a bailable offense and it can be you know uh, it can, you we can give a vague definition and we can strictly follow kedarnath principle so these are all the things that can be done with respect to the uh, with respect to the challenges which were there with respect to sedition okay so this is what all about today's topic thanks a lot for attending the session and we'll meet again with a new topic okay so we have discussed what's there in news we have discussed the quote of quote of gandhi that uh, talking sedition as a prince of all the political sections we talked about this the section 124a of ipc we talked about supreme court judgment which is you know kedarnath case or we call it as kedarnath principle and we have seen the scholars views okay anushka singh we have seen so scholars like abhinav chandra chud and all and law commission as well and suggestions and way forward according to that scholars views we have given so this is what all about sedition and we'll meet tomorrow with a new topic thank you everyone